Hi, thank you for joining me today. My name is John Noob. This is John 2028 Apologetics. Today's video is going to be on Ignatius of Antioch. He was born on May 15th, 35 AD, and died due to martyrdom in July 108 AD under the reign of Trajan. Ignatius was a Syrian who was taught by John the Apostle himself, and he was a friend of Polycarp, who I just made a video on. Ignatius was also the Bishop of Antioch. Ignatius was arrested for the charge of, quote, atheism. And to put this in historical perspective, around the first century, that was because he denied the Roman gods. They considered him an atheist. The irony in that, huh? He was taken from Antioch to Rome by an escort of ten soldiers, which is also called a company of leopards. And he was eventually fed to wild beasts, probably more likely lions. Now, the Roman soldiers made several stops during this, whenever he was being transferred to Rome. And uh, he, during this, he wrote seven letters. Okay, And these seven letters were given to people all over the, the churches in the area. Okay, Now, these, now these were the Ignatius to the Ephesians, Magnesians, uh, Philadelphians, Trallians, Sumerians, his homeboy Polycarp. And his final letter to the Romans. Okay? So he wrote these letters as he's on his way to being martyred. So what we have here is seven letters written by a first century Christian who was under the Apostle John who walked, and obviously John walked and talked and worshipped our Lord God and Savior Jesus. This, this gives us, though, as a window to the past where today we can get a grasp on what the earliest Christians believed about Jesus, who he was, and what he accomplished. We can also compare today's common Christian beliefs, like the doctrine of the Trinity and the deity of Christ, which are common Christian beliefs, core beliefs, with that of the first century Christian, who was under, like I said, the Apostle John. And a spoiler alert, it's the same that we have today, okay? And again, I don't mean to keep bringing this up, but just let me go on a rant here real quick, is that you know, every cult, it seems, has a different Jesus, okay? Um, than what, what, what original Christian Orthodox teaches and what Biblical Christianity teaches. We have heard the arguments from people before and same, the same tired, overplayed arguments like Jesus isn't God or the Doctrine of Trinity uh, evolved over time from the Council of Nicaea, etc., etc., etc. Interesting, all these cults like Mormonism and Jehovah's Witnesses, they all have the same teaching. They all have that same kind of poison in them. Okay? In other words, Jesus was created. He's not eternal. He's not God, okay? So, and I don't think that's coincidental at all. The enemy knows the importance of Jesus and his deity. As Jesus said in John 8, 24, I told you that you would die in your sins for unless you believe that I am, he will die in your sins. The I am statement, the identity, G, the identity Christ gives and it attributes to himself is the same as in the book of Exodus in three fourteen that God gives himself to Moses, as it reads, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. So, and that's, and that's why Jesus was being charged with blasphemy. They knew what he was saying, okay? It's like a very intimate, powerful um, word that God uses to describe himself, the I am, the ego I me in Greek. In Greek, it's called ego I me. Okay, but Ignatius' writings that we have of those seven letters also shows that he has access to the Gospels, like the Book of Matthew, First Corinthians, Ephesians, First and Second Timothy, Romans, Galatians, uh, Philippians, Colossians, First Thessalonians. 
So this gives us an understanding that the canon we have today, the books the earliest Christians believed were being inspired of the same. So this is very good to to um, dive into what our early uh, Christians, what they read, and, and when it comes to argumentation against the orthodoxy that we have today. All right, so but I, let's go over those seven letters real quick. So out of those seven letters, there's there's some key statements that, that Ignatius wrote, okay? We're not going to go over every single one of them. I'm trying to keep this under 15 minutes, just like my Polycarp video. But we're going to go over some of his writings, okay? So, in his letter in Ephesians, during his opening monologue, Ignatius writes, United and elect through genuine suffering by the will of the Father and of Jesus Christ our God. He later adds, being imitators of God, once you took on new life through the blood of God. It's obviously Jesus. During the section warning about false teachers, Ignatius writes, there is only one physician who is both flesh and spirit, born and unborn, God and man, true life and death, both from Mary and from God, first subject to suffering and then beyond it, Jesus Christ our Lord. He, he even put some Trinitarian stuff in there. God the Father hoisted up the heights by the crane of Jesus Christ, which is the cross, using as a rope the Holy Spirit. Your faith is what lifts you up, and love is the way that leads up to God. And also he wrote, For, for our God, Jesus the Christ, was conceived by Mary according to God's plan, both from the seed of David and of the Holy Spirit. Okay? His letter to the Romans was his last uh, book, by the way, that he wrote, or his letter, excuse me. He writes, in the opening monologue, he writes, um, Hardest greetings, blamelessly, in Jesus Christ our God. And one of my favorites, he also writes, For our God, Jesus Christ, is more visible now that he is in the Father. The work is not a matter of persuasive rhetoric. Rather, Christianity is greatest when it's hated by the world. Hated by the world. His letter to the Philadelphians in his opening monologue, he lists the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in that paragraph. His letter to Polycarp, his homeboy, he writes this about Jesus. Wait expectantly for the one who is above time, the eternal, the invisible, for our sake became visible, the intangible, the unsuffering, for our sake suffered, for our sake endured in every way. And this goes on and on and on and on and on, you know, for, uh, for what our first, our first century Christian brother wrote. Okay, and I'm going to end this video. And like I said, there's more, there's more writings about God and, and stuff like this in his seven letters. But I'm going to finish with um, his letter to the Romans where it is uh, titled, Desire to Face, Not Flee Martyrdom. Okay. Now, this is where we get another glimpse into the past of a first century Christian about to be fed to wild beasts and for not bending the knee to the Roman gods and for his allegiance, for his, for allegiance to Yahweh, the true God. So this is what he wrote. Okay. The strength of this, of our brother here is, is amazing. All right. From Syria all the way to Rome, I'm fighting with wild beasts on land and sea, by night and day, chained amidst ten leopards, those are the soldiers, who only get worse when they are well treated. Yet because of their mistreatment, I am becoming more of a disciple. Nevertheless, I am not, I am not thereby justified. May I, have the pleasure, may I have the pleasure of the wild beasts that they have prepared for me, and I pray that they prove to be prompt with me. I will even coax them to devour me quickly, not as they have done with some whom they were too timid to touch. And if when I am willing and ready and they are not, I will force them. Bear with me. I know what is best for me. Now at last I am beginning to be a disciple. May nothing visible or invisible envy of me so that I may reach Jesus Christ. Fire and cross and battles with wild beasts mutilation, mangling, wrenching of bones, the hacking of limbs, the crushing of my whole body, 
pure, uh, cruel tortures of the devil. Let these come upon me. Only let me reach Jesus Christ. Neither the ends of the earth nor the kingdom of this age are of any use to me. It is better for me to die for Jesus Christ than to rule over the ends of the earth. Him I seek who died on our behalf. Him I long for who rose again for our sake. The pains of birth are upon me. So we have very strong man writing that stuff on his way to his death. Being martyred for not bending the knee to Roman gods. Being called an, quote, atheist. Again, the irony in that is just overwhelming to me. Um, but uh, I'm, like I've said this several times in this video, that it's, it's important that we understand that today our beliefs are the same. That believing in Jesus Christ was common amongst the Christians in that time. It was biblical. He was taught by John the Apostle. Him and his boy Polycarp were taught by John the Apostle. He carried on these beliefs that were handed down to him from John the Apostle who walked and talked with Jesus Christ, who actually walked and talked with the risen Lord God Jesus himself. Clearly he's a Trinitarian. Clearly he believed Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, utmost, highest. He calls Jesus Christ God over a dozen times in these letters. So this is... Just rest assured that the beliefs that you have are the same that the earliest Christians had. And if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is Lord God, then you will die in your sins. Because that is what he said, and that is the true doctrine, the true belief of Christianity. You have to have Jesus Christ in your heart. You have to know who the real Jesus is for you to truly have the real Jesus in you. And for you to be... For the Holy Spirit to dwell in you, you have to come to terms and you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord, God, and Savior or you will die in your sins. And the earliest Christians knew this and it's what they taught and it's what they wrote and he's even writing in his letters. So I uh, thank you for watching this video and if you got any questions or comments, please leave them down in the, in the comment section and um, God bless you in Jesus' name. Have a good day.